Hello everybody, Budly Neck here. This is Mods of the Year. I went through every single mod created last year. That was over 7,000 mods to pick out all the mods that I thought were really good. To make it on the list, the mod had to be released in 2020 and no remakes or ports were allowed. That list was nearly 500 mods long, so obviously I had to narrow it down further. Unfortunately, that meant I had to leave a lot of very good mods off of the list. I finally got it down to just under 70 mods, and I've done some creative grouping, so I can call this the top 50 mods of 2020. Obviously, 70 mods is a lot to go over, so I'm going to split this up into two episodes. The order I'm showing these mods in is completely random. I'm not going to try to choose the one mod that's the best, and I'm not going to be going over each mod in depth like I normally do. I've already covered a lot of these mods in depth in Mods of the Week episodes. If a mod on this list sounds interesting to you, check out my channel for more in-depth spotlights. And finally, I didn't put RTX for Bedrock on the list because it's not a mod, but I wanted to at least mention it because it was officially released in 2020, which was a pretty big deal because it's pretty awesome stuff. And it's how I made this stage look like an actual award show. All right, I apologize for the very long intro. I usually try to keep these under 30 seconds. Let's get to the mods. The first mod on the list is Alex's Mobs. This mod currently adds over 25 new mobs that are extremely well-designed and thought out. And they've been adding more pretty quickly. All of these mobs have a use or perform a function and interact with each other as well as with vanilla mobs to form a beautifully balanced ecosystem. They all behave and look like they belong in the game and if someone didn't know better, they would have a hard time picking out the modded mobs from vanilla mobs. Next, we have a group of four mods that I think will be staples of mod packs for a long time to come. I'm putting Macaw's furniture, windows, doors, and trap doors into the next spot. All of these are very high quality and well-polished mods full of beautiful new decorative items for your world. To be honest, I was amazed to see that all of these were released in 2020. The developer has really made a good name for themselves and I'm looking forward to seeing what they make this year. We have another four mods grouped together made by the one and only Pam of Pam's Harvest Craft. Pam's Harvest Craft 2 Food Core, Food Extended, Crops, and Trees are more examples of some highly polished top shelf mods released last year that I think will become staples of most mod packs. You can use just Food Core, which only uses vanilla world generation to keep a vanilla experience, or you can add some of the other mods that all come together to add an incredible amount of beautiful plant life and new foods to your world. I really like how she's kept the mods modular so you can pick and choose the ones that fit your current pack. Next, we have Extreme Sound Muffler. This is a highly configurable sound manager. Sometimes Minecraft has a lot of things making a lot of sounds and it can get annoying. Using this mod, you can adjust the volume of every detail. If we take a look at chickens, for example, we can adjust the walking sound, the clucking sound, and the egg laying sound all individually. It has some very handy searching and sorting features, and it has anchors that you can use to adjust the sound in a specific area. Ars Nouveau gets the next spot on the list. This has to be one of my favorite magic mods of all time. It's already a great mod, and the developers are always hard at work finding ways to improve it. Using this mod, you can create custom spells by mixing and matching glyphs that you can unlock using the glyph press. This spell designing mechanic is extremely fun to experiment with. This mod has beautiful mobs and machines, a nice radial menu to cast your spells with, and it just feels nice if that makes sense. Everything responds the way you think it should, sounds the way you think it should, and usually looks better than I could have ever imagined. Next, we have Young's Better Mineshafts. To put it simply, these are just gorgeous. There are nine biome variants that all look amazing, they're beautifully detailed, and they make exploring mineshafts fun again. I honestly can't imagine better looking mineshafts than these. I think Mojang should take some notes from this mod. Origins and Origins Classes gets the next spot. This is one of the most original mods I've seen in a long time. With this mod, you choose an origin when you create a new world and you begin with some special abilities. Currently, it has nine origins that you can choose from organized by the amount they change vanilla gameplay. 
The developer has also made Origins Classes, which is an add-on that allows you to also choose a class. Classes provide smaller benefits, but come with no drawbacks. The developer also made Origins data-driven, so others can create new Origins pretty easily, so you can find some pretty nice add-ons to try out if these nine Origins aren't enough for you. Next up, we have Polymorph, which solves recipe conflicts. When you put a lot of mods together, it's usually inevitable that some things share the same recipe. This mod takes an easy and intuitive approach to solving this. If more than one recipe exists for a group of items, a button appears that allows you to choose the item that you want. These utility mods usually aren't flashy or extravagant, but sometimes, like in this case, they have a huge impact on gameplay. FTB and Latvian Modder make the list with three mods that I'm going to group together in the next spot. We have FTB Ultimine, FTB Essentials, and FTB Teams. FTB Ultimine allows you to harvest multiple blocks using a hotkey. You can cycle through different patterns to harvest in, and you can configure it to match your needs. FTB Essentials adds all the useful commands for servers that we're all used to having, like back, home, and TPA, along with many, many more. And FTB Teams is used by other mods to allow teams to work together on quests or to allow teams to share plots of land. I really love the new vein mining options available by Ultimine, and I think FTB Essentials and Teams are going to be in most big mod packs for years to come. Farmer's Delight gets the next spot. It's a mod that gently expands upon farming and cooking in Minecraft. It adds a new way to find seeds and crops, new tools to help gather materials, a cooking pot that allows you to cook and store new meals. You can actually break the pot while it has meals in it and bring them with you for later. And some of the meals can give you and your pets some helpful effects. I've barely touched on what this mod adds, and it is very polished with some original ideas and mechanics. I honestly can't think of a good reason not to put this mod in a mod pack. Team Abnormals comes in with three mods in the next spot. We have Savage and Ravage, Autumnity, and Atmospheric. Savage and Ravage improves and expands on Illager-related content, including the way that raids are started. With this mod, you have to burn an ominous banner to start a raid, and the more you burn, the higher the bad omen multiplier. They've improved Illager AI, redesigned the Pillager Outpost, including some cool new traps, added some new armor, and added some new creeper-related content, including baby creepers that are on your side. Autumnity adds a couple autumnal biomes with maple trees, falling leaves, carpets of leaves on the ground, chickens are replaced by turkeys, it adds some new berries and a new snail mob that can be used to create a new slime block and some new armor. Atmospheric currently contains about 10 new rainforest and dunes biomes. These all look fantastic, but my personal favorite is the flourishing dunes biome. It's a nice change from vanilla deserts decorated with new blocks, plants, and trees. Terraforged is a world generation mod that aims to create more immersive and inspiring worlds to explore. It features an overhaul of the vanilla generation system, custom terrain shapes, simulated erosion, better rivers, custom decorations, tons of configuration options, and more. The world generation created by this mod looks amazing, it feels more realistic, and it just makes the world seem more grand. Up next, we have the Bumble Zone mod, which adds the Bumble Zone dimension. You can reach the Bumble Zone by throwing an Ender Pearl at a bee nest or a bee hive. This dimension looks like you're inside of a bee nest. While you're here, be very careful because the bees are very protective of their honey. If they catch you collecting any honey or honeycomb, or even just drinking honey from a bottle, you can be in a world of trouble. The Undergarden gets the 14th spot in this video and it adds the Undergarden Dimension, which is a dark subterranean world below the bedrock of the Overworld. This eerie dimension is made up of eight biomes filled with new plants and mobs that all come together with a signature look and feel to form an interesting new world to explore. Along with all the new stones, woods, and decorative blocks that you can make from them, this mod also adds several new armors, weapons, and tools, and there's even a new boss on the way. Jelly Squid gets the next spot with Phosphor, Lithium, and Sodium, three performance-enhancing mods. Phosphor works to improve Minecraft's lighting engine. With this mod installed, the time to generate new chunks can be cut in half. 
and frame stuttering while exploring the world can be significantly reduced. Lithium is a general purpose optimization mod improving on things like game physics, mob AI, and block ticking. With this mod installed, you can see on average a 45% improvement on server tick times. This can turn an unplayable, frustrating server into a fast, fun game experience. And finally, Sodium is a rendering engine replacement that greatly improves frame rates, reduces micro stutter, and fixes graphical issues. All three of these mods can be paired together to make Minecraft the smooth running, well oiled machine that we all want it to be. Resourceful Bees adds bees that can be used to generate resources through centrifuges and mutations. This mod comes with 20 default bees and gives the ability to easily add and customize as many bees as you like simply using JSON files. It also adds machines that can generate RF from honey. It adds manual RF powered and multi-block centrifuges to collect resources from the honeycomb that the bees create. It adds tiered beehives and a multi-block aviary along with many, many other bee-related items. I think this mod deserves a spot in the top mods of 2020, not only for the amazing work they've done to add what's in the mod, but also for all the work they put in to make this mod so easy to customize and add new bees to fit any needs that your mod pack may have. And the number 17 spot in this video goes to Eidolon. It's a magic mod that takes a darker approach. It has aspects of alchemy, thurgy, necromancy, and soul manipulation. With this mod, you can play as a dark mage performing rituals and communing with dark gods. It's well documented with the in-game guide and it is jam-packed full of fun spells, curios, weapons, tools, armor, and mobs. Repurposed Structures takes an interesting approach to adding new structures to your world. They've redesigned existing vanilla structures to fit in new dimensions and biomes. It's amazing how nice a nether fortress can look in a jungle if you change the block palette, or how nice a shipwreck can look in the end. So far, this mod has added new varieties of pretty much every structure in vanilla Minecraft, and they've added a few new ones of their own. Better End brings some welcome changes to the end dimension with 12 gorgeous new biomes, 5 new mobs, new blocks, and all the items you expect to be able to craft from those blocks and some new game mechanics like rituals and anvil recipes. One of the more interesting and newer features is the new custom end world generator. This is disabled by default because it doesn't play nice with existing worlds and can cause some issues with features that use the vanilla height to determine placement. But if you're planning to make a new world, you may want to play around with this feature and check out some of the options. It uses a totally new method for creating islands that makes island clusters look more natural. It adds height variation to the end, making it look more interesting, and it uses correct biome distribution that will fix a lot of problems that the end mods have had to deal with. You can even remove the void ring between the main end island and all the other island clusters, that way the end becomes much more playable. Sandwichable allows you to make sandwiches and some other foods in a very cool way. You can prepare ingredients using the cutting board and knife along with the toaster and desalinator to design custom made sandwiches. You can mix and match the ingredients, piling them as high as you like and it will actually accurately represent what you made in your hand. This is a fun new mechanic that allows you to make your favorite IRL sandwich or to make those Scooby-Doo sandwiches you've always dreamed of. And that is all the time we have for this episode. We've covered 33 mods in only 20 spots. That means the next video will have 30 spots to fill, but there isn't nearly as much grouping in the next video, so it's going to be about the same amount of mods per video. If you guys have any good suggestions for mods that should go in the final 30 spots, definitely put them down in the comments. I've already picked the mods that I think should be there, but if I see a really good suggestion in the comments with a lot of people that agree with it, I may change my list and put it in there. I want to thank all of you guys for watching and for sticking around to the very end. I need to give an extra big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Their names are up on the screen right now. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry I haven't been on the Patreon server lately. I've been super busy with videos. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Keep playing. Keep having fun. 
we will see you guys next time.